Hey guys and welcome to the show. Today we have Claudio Rao playing Beethoven's Appassionata full version. It's going to be very intense. I'm actually going to break down the video a little differently this time. Stay tuned to see what I'm going to do. I'm going to be giving my thoughts in between certain segments of the piece so you have a better idea of how I feel about it instead of just kind of running through it since we've probably all heard of Passionata. If I'm saying that wrong, you can laugh at me now, but I'll get you in the comments. Let's get started. Okay, here we go. As promised, Beethoven's a passionata played by a Claudio Arau. Passionata. Piano sonata number 23 in F minor. Passionata. Passionata. This is the great Arau. How do you pronounce that, guys? Tell me in the comments. No, it's Claudio. Let's see. His timing's a little different than I think it's supposed to be. It's a little different. He has a little variation there. Which is expected. It's expected. He has a slight variation on the way he's playing each. I think it's each bar. He's splitting it into sections. He's starting to dig in. It's really fun that it's the older videos like this one. The way they translated the music. The, the, the respect they gave it back then was a little different than they gave it today. It was a much more, I'd say, upper scale society thing back in the day when Arau was at his, his prominent period. Beautiful. Oh. He's really developing this early on because it's a longer piece for for a sort of a solo piano piece. It's a little longer, and he's really taking the time to develop it very nicely. And of course, the token, the well-known portion of it, doom, 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 doom. and the beautiful, beautiful.
the accompaniments to that main melody. Let me give you some thoughts. Arau is doing slight variations in each set of bars, but it, the variations and the expression went much deeper than that in the translation of Beethoven's original work. Basically, he was changing it in each bar and then each set of bars as a, as a phrase, so it was like a phrase in a phrase. And also, he was making it one piece in itself, the first movement, as well as developing it for the entire work, which is it's pretty standard nowadays, I'd say, with the top performers, but he was doing it in a way that it was very colorful. It, w it wasn't like Beethoven I've heard before. It was very colorful, it was very his own. I've heard Claudio play before in past recordings that I've done on the channel, and he's got his own sort of style. It's very creative, very nuanced style, you know? Let's get back to it. See, there's that nuance like I spoke about, where he was, he's got a nuance and a nuance and a nuance in the phrasing, yet he has expression for just the first movement, you feel right there, you can feel the expression of the first movement, but he's also building it to be a complete piece as, a, as an introduction, so so many things going on in this performance, this is really fantastic. And of course, all the technical ability of playing the piano itself is it's really outstanding. And I think that's what the genius of Beethoven really is. He allows the artists, the, the performers, the musicians, to really have liberty. It's, it's, such, a, it's such an intricate way he, he composed the music, you know? And that's why it allowed people the freedom to make so many different variations on it and express it in different ways. That's why it still stands the test of time, guys. I mean, listen to that. There's so many different ways and different nuances that can make you feel differently. Oh. That really is what classical music is. It's it's music in its first form, but it's a highly it's like the most highly developed language on earth is music. If you see it on, on pen and paper. Because it's like it's like reading a book in your native language. Yet it can be spoken a billion different ways if you want to. first movement and you can feel the phrasing coming to an end of the first movement but the, the overall phrase itself and the variations that he's doing are still leaving the door open for the rest of the piece fantastic fantastic that's why I love this so much this art form classical music it's just it's endless endless investigation and learning and enjoyment to it so enjoyable Some thoughts. That brilliant token melody that makes Appassionata famous, or this one famous by Beethoven, was developing in this last segment that we just listened to. It really is fantastic. That dun, 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 like almost like a like a march. It's almost like a march. 
and a passion out I'm not sure what it means like the literal translation I'm sure it means something some sort of passion a passion for a passion of or the passion I could be totally off guys Arau is playing it in a way that is passionate that's what is so ironic and beautiful at the same time about this performance he's developing the passion and the emotion of the piece to fit the frame of what the piece is actually about. And that's just another brilliant aspect of classical music, if you don't know it. That's fantastic. That a lot of artists and musicians that are really world famous for their craft of playing the music, they, they, they have their own emotional translation, but they stay true to the name of the piece, first of all, the style of the piece, what the composer intended, and then they add their own beautiful musical expression. It's fantastic. Let's get back to it. Here we go. That beautiful, beautiful melody that is so pointed in this piece that really, it really is like a march. Mm -hmm. And the technical aspect, we haven't even mentioned the technical abilities of Rao, how flawless they are really. And his technical aspect, his technical abilities are so intertwined with the emotional ability. Really something special. We feel that the technical aspect is so, is so developed and so honed that you almost can't tell the technical aspects that they're just so beautifully expressing the, the emotions of the piece. Right there. That's a that's a difficult technical move. And it's just it just sings emotion. Beautiful. Mmm. Mmm. And there's that melody. Brilliant, brilliant. The overall tone is beautiful too. Perfect tone for this piece. It has hints of Beethoven, but it's not overly, overly rich. Like he didn't try to mimic other people playing it. How they traditionally play Beethoven. God. And the frantic sound here. Slightly frantic. Oh. Right, because the pa passion. There's always this, the, the fear of after passion of losing it. There's that frantic aspect of it. It's such a it's just like with music. You feel beautiful. With those highs and the lows, that's what makes great music. You have to have the balance. And there's the balance right here with this piece. Oh. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant. Mm. Mm. Oh, fantastic.
was there. Wow. Guys, so many things I want to talk about. That first movement was absolutely exceptional. It was exceptional. A row developed that so deeply, that emotion, and that the overall tone and the overall quality of the piece was so developed. And now, th th just the first few notes of the second movement have just... I mean, all the emotions, you feel the... F I'm flooding right now. I'm flooding with emotion. It's just... It's overwhelming. And this second movement's going to be so extraordinary because Arau's just... The, he, the first movement he developed so well, like I said. But the second movement, did you feel the total shift? It's like Arau flicked the switch and just totally changed his whole persona and just is able to play it so beautifully and slowly now. And he's able to fully express this totally different tonal change in the piece. Oh, I'm excited. Let's go. I'm trembling, guys. I swear I'm trembling. Let's go. Mm. You feel it? It's so, it's so deep. The tone is so deep. The emotion is so deep. God. Oh. Again, it sounds, it sounds as if it's a march. Now, is Beethoven, metaphorically speaking, about a passionata, like a march through life, where life is about passion? It could be, because the first one was like a, an upbeat, steady march, like you have to get people excited, you know, in your youth. Now it's slow, starting to be solemn, starting to think a little more as you get older. So this could have been a march. On life, apasionata, because that's what life's about, you know. It's about passion, passion of what you do, passion of what you enjoy, passion in your friends and family. Hmm. Hmm. See, in the in the variation, the expression isn't as isn't as youthful it isn't as exuberant it's a much more steady slow expression more methodical hmm So beautiful. God. This is, he's really, he is extracting every ounce of emotion that could be, that, that, that this piece could have. Oh. So simple. Such a simple little melody. But it's, it's so advanced in the way he's doing it. Oh my God. so rich it's so rich in tone oh my goodness He's like an angel playing it. It's like it's like a little angel is playing the piano to be able to. Oh my God! It is just perfect. <laughs> it really is. Oh, 
little lively bounce here. And this, and the reason I'm having this, this reaction to it, is because of the way he developed the first movement, and we listened to it. And it was, it was just so advanced, and technically flawless, but not only that, but the variations in the variations, as I mentioned, and the phrasing, and the overall making the first movement its own piece, but as well as making an introduction to this. All these emotions are understood by classical musicians. These guys know how to extract these feelings from you, because that's the whole point of classical music, in my humble opinion, you know? It's just to extract these emotions. And they know how to do it. I mean, they feel it themselves while they're playing. Hmm. Oh, some thoughts. Now, if you guys are viewers of the channel, you know by now that I'm no expert on these things. I think I... I'm a self-proclaimed expert on emotion in the music because I feel so deeply and I could just, I just, the way I'm a very wear my heart on my sleeve kind of guy. And I can feel so deeply with, with just the, the, the slightest twists and turns in the music because I have such a passion for the music itself. And I, the way Rao developed that first movement so beautifully and then the slight exchange of speed and tone that made all the difference in the world to the second movement and made it just overwhelming through the whole thing. Absolutely fantastic. Let's continue, guys. Okay. I'm really, I'm overwhelmed. I'm just so overwhelmed. This is so emotional. Oh. Oh. God. Oh. I think Arouse technique for making this second movement seem more stretched out in the phrasing. The first movement, he had one bar with the variation. The second movement, it seems like there's two, two sets, you know, two bars. Yeah, the variation sounds like it's two bars in the second one, which is very creative and it is a technical way to do it. Very interesting. Uh oh, uh oh. Yes. Now there's just such a the immense slowdown with all that emotion. Now we're excited to get to the the fast jazzy stuff. Mm. Yes. doing three, three bars for the variation, which is it, it's an excellent way, it's an excellent method, I think, you know, if you think about it, because it makes the piece sound complete, so that might have been his style of doing it, which I don't know, guys, I'm just, I'm winging it here, this is, uh, this is called, uh, total freestyling by me, but I'm just, uh, I'm doing what I, I'm talking about what I hear. See? There. There. You can hear it. And it's not necessarily 
necessarily always where the where the notes are placed, where like, there's a change in note. It's just a masterpiece by our body. Oh, thoughts. Okay, guys, this will be the final set of thoughts from me before the piece is over. Just like I said, I think, I think, my, what my ears are telling me is that Arau did the first movement, one bar, one bar of notes with the variation. Then the second movement, two bars. Now the third movement, it sounds like three bars for each variation where he mixes the, the music and that's a brilliant way to do it and I'm sure it's a popular way to do it now correct me if I'm wrong guys down in the comments those of you who know music and those of you who are musicians and classical musicians and composers I know a lot of you practice this stuff let me know if I'm right or wrong because I'd really, I'd really like to know but it's just it's just a genius performance and it's so exciting in classical music it always seems to be the way that the finale or the third movement is the most fun one. It's the most, not the most expressive all the time, but the most fun. And let's have, finish having fun, guys. Let's go. Okay, here we go. And of course, there is the Steinway. Mmm. Sonata-esque rhythm to it, you know? And even the style, see how you play the left hand? That, that's, that's how you play the third quarter of the Moonlight Sonata. The variation on this one that I just saw, I don't know which one was written first, Moonlight Sonata or this. The left hand stays still in Moonlight Sonata, and then the right hand goes like this. In this one, the left hand played the rhythm, but the rhythm with the left hand move, while well, the right hand played a constant rhythm, that's interesting. And even in the composing, the composing itself is a variation on a variation to develop and intertwine the melodies. brilliant I love this I've actually reacted to Cassia playing this third movement it's fantastic it's absolutely fantastic so legendary What a nice 
nice, nice brightness there. Oh. Fiftieth anniversary, and the round just finishing so powerfully. God, the end, the finale of the third movement is always so compelling. Not emotionally heartwarming or joyful, but it just it gets you fired up. It's like. It's always played that way. Fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Why around? Around Beethoven's brilliant. Beethoven, happy children, 50th anniversary. Around, man. Fantastic. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Absolutely exceptional. Absolutely brilliant. Well, guys. Well, that'll do it. Give me a like, subscribe if you're new here, leave a comment in the comment section below. We'll see you next time. Take care.